They're mostly on our other computer, right? Sam Burnett's first day of high school is a day he'll never forget. It's not what happened at school, but it's what happened after. And I went from school to a cardiologist appointment, and then I came home, and that's where I collapsed. His heart stopped beating. He was bleeding internally. Sam's Very life scary. was on the line. You know, it's, an emergency is totally different than something that's planned. Just three weeks prior, Sam found out he had a heart defect and had to have open heart surgery. This latest incident would make for his second life-saving surgery. The stitch had come out of his aorta, so they were able to fix it to repair it. That's when Sam's doctor nominated him to receive a wish. But I think Sam and I just like sort of like were like, you know, like I thought there was a long list. I thought, well, that's really nice. I didn't really think he'd get it. Yeah. <laughs> like most people, Sam and his mom thought the foundation only granted wishes to kids who were dying. A phone call changed all that. I was actually really stunned, and then I went to pick up Sam from school because at that point, yeah, mom was you were picking me up every day because I wasn't supposed to like be alone. So then she picked me up, and then in the car, she told me. Yeah, we're both like, whoa. <laughs> Once the shock subsided, it was time for Sam to make his wish. Since I was very little, like I always wanted, I loved penguins and I loved Antarctica. And it, from when I was like from kindergarten to like seventh grade, I just thought I wanted to be like a penguin biologist. I don't even know if that's a real profession, but. <laughs> his love was about to become a reality as he and his family headed out on a two-week cruise to Antarctica. This is our room in the cruise ship. And then we'd see these rocks and we'd get closer. And as you get closer, you realize like they're all penguins. They have these like colonies with tens of thousands of them. For Sam, traveling to the cool continent was a dream come true. He even was able to get off the ship and walk around. They'll just like look at you and like walk around you and stuff which was almost better than touching them because it's like they're interested in you. It's just fun to watch them interact. Like if you just sit down and watch, like focus on one penguin, like he'll like get in fights with his neighbors like on their nests and he'll like try and steal rocks. <laughs> and like, like they're just, they're really curious and just funny. But there was something Sam didn't enjoy about being in the penguins natural habitat. Hey, goodbye. <laughs> Four-year-old Reyes Avula is excited. This spirited little boy loves Alaska Airlines. You would just see the tail of Alaska plane and just scream and just totally excitement. But there's something else he's excited about. It was just like unbelievable that we actually get to do this. Reyes's doctor nominated him to the Make-A-Wish Foundation. He really wanted to see Alaska Airlines, but then he also wanted to see Mickey Mouse and SpongeBob. So we said, well, let's go to Florida and we're going on Alaska Airlines. Barina says it never crossed her mind Reyes's wish would come true. I never thought that we would actually qualify just because Reyes doesn't really look sick, but he is a terminal ill child. Reyes was born with Menke's disease. His body doesn't produce enough copper, which impacts his development, specifically his brain. I guess we all have to have copper for brain development and for motor skills and everything. So he's a little delayed in some areas, but he's doing really good. One of the reasons he's doing well is because his brother Tommy was diagnosed with the same disease. He died when he was two. Barina calls Reyes her miracle boy because of Tommy. Tommy was a blessing in disguise for my other kids. With this disease, most kids don't live to see their third birthday. Reyes is four. Every day being a parent is like, is today the day? But then we go to bed and wake up the next morning and we're like, yay, it wasn't, you know. Excitement fills the air as they wait for Reyes's wish I flight. Kids, we've never been on a vacation together. Okay. And when they come back home, their new friends that make a wish will be waiting. They're just an awesome team. And I'll be friends with them for life. Day period. And it was very stressful and very overwhelming. And I wanted something special for her. That's where make a wish comes in. After learning she was eligible, her name was added to the list. So, what did four-year-old Sophia wish for? To meet King Felix. Felix Hernandez of the Seattle Mariners. Sophia, shy and soft-spoken, gives us her version of how that meeting went down. We asked how she felt when they first met. Happy. What did they do? Play in the dirt. We ate corn dogs. And when he came in, we did a corn dog eating contest. And the winner of that? Me. 
<laughs> the best thing about seeing the whole interaction process was this giant baseball player getting on the same level as a four-year-old little girl. The whole team kind of came together and made a, a pretty good wish for her. But it wasn't just Sophia sporting a big grin when she met Felix. Mom and dad were pretty excited too. It was awesome because I mean, we're big Mariners fans and have been for a very long time. So obviously, you know, the girls have just kind of followed suit. And yeah, I mean, it was pretty cool that that's what she chose to have her wish be. It's safe to say Sophia's wish hit a home run and the family is grateful to make a wish for making it happen. It's a very, very scary situation to be in, but there are people out there, um, depending on what the condition is, there are communities out there, um, there's Make-A-Wish that can, that can make a day or a week for your family special so that you're not thinking about your medical appointments, you're not thinking about the diagnosis. And despite her condition, Sophia doesn't let it get in her way. Good. So far she's doing well, um, and, and we hope that one day her heart's strong enough and we don't have to have any more surgeries, but it's, it's just, Time will tell. That next morning, she and Ellie were headed to Portland for intense treatment. They said, Mom, what's going on? I said, just get in the car with me. I need you to come to the hospital. And we got to the hospital and we explained to them that their sister was really sick and that we needed to go to Portland. Ellie, now 10, was four years old when she was diagnosed. Her mom says it was never a question of whether or not she would make it. I knew that from the moment she was diagnosed that it was going to be okay, but it was going to be hard. Even then, Ellie's strength came through. In the beginning, if we got emotional, she would ask us to leave or she would start fussing because she really was still almost a, basically a toddler at four. I'm I mean, not really she comfortable with crying around people. No, she didn't like that at all, so we would try to keep it keep the emotions out of the room. Ellie doesn't remember much about her time in the hospital, but she does remember making a wish. I wanted to go see Pop Pretty like the castle, the big fat castle. Her wish came true and she and her family were treated like royalty at Disney World. The beautiful thing is that they they lifted us all up. They make you feel happy when you're in treatment. Ellie met princesses and got to see the sky light up with fireworks or what she calls Pop Pretty. It was really fun. We um we had a good time, and it was just really fun because since being locked up in a hospital was really hard. So I've never really seen her emotional about her treatment and about Make-A-Wish and about all these really neat things that she's been able to do. Um, it's really neat to, to hear how much it actually did impact her. Dawn says Ellie's illness was no doubt a struggle, but when you're a parent, you don't think, you just do. Within a couple minutes, she was up on the stage dancing and signing along with Rachel. And um, I could just tell she was having a dream come true. Lindsay Just's wish was to meet signing celebrity Rachel Coleman. Lindsay, what's this one? You're red because your lips are red. Someone she grew up watching since she was two years old, and someone who taught her how to communicate. She and I both learned all our sign language from signing time. This past September, Rachel brought signing time up to Anchorage for a special Make-A-Wish concert just for Lindsay. The entire family was there for support. Both sets of grandparents flew up from Canada to be here and Lindsay's aunt uh, from Alberta and her cousins and her other aunt from Seattle. We were all there. As if the concert wasn't enough, Rachel gave Lindsay a lifetime supply of signing time products. To Lindsay, thanks for bringing me to Alaska. Love Rachel Coleman. And there was something else. So Rachel Coleman always wears an orange shirt in um, all her DVDs. It's part of her persona. And um, how she's recognized is by the orange sweater. <laughs> Rachel put the sweater on Lindsay at the concert, and she never took it off. She crawled into bed with her orange sweater on. It was magical. It was also a surprise to her mom, Cindy, who didn't think Lindsay was a typical Make-A-Wish kid. My first reaction was, wow, I wasn't even sure Lindsay qualified because she had heart problems all her life, but she wasn't um, critically ill. But she did qualify. 
this 14 year old overcame a lot. She had open heart surgery when she was four months old and was on a ventilator with a tracheostomy.